Okay, so to write the best prompt possible, you're going to need a system. The best prompts tend to have a few characteristics. They're specific and detailed, they use examples, they're concise and follow a format that you can quickly reproduce, they're written in a way the AI can understand, and they use constraints and a specific format for their output. The job of a great prompt is to focus in on a specific topic and to try and narrow in on good quality data. I'll explain how we can go about doing that using my prompt framework, which conveniently follows an easy to remember mnemonic, craft or crafted with two optional steps at the end. Each of the following steps just needs to be a sentence or a list of instructions, and I've added in the structure so that you can quickly copy and paste it and adapt it to your own needs. So let's look at how to craft your killer prompt. C is for context, R is for request, A is for actions, F is for frame, and T is for template. And then we've got two optional steps at the end with E for examples and D for develop or to refine your prompt. So let's begin with the C of craft, which is context and the most important step. For context, you might want to ask the AI to adopt a persona, a character or a role. For example, you are an interview coach or you are a blog writing expert or you are the author JK Rowling. You might also then want to specify the tone you want the response to be in and the audience the response is aimed at. For context, I usually think along the lines of persona, audience tone, or PAT, when considering any prompt context. So you might say something like, you're a children's book writer writing for children aged 10 to 18. You write in the style of JK Rowling. Next up is R for request. Here, you give the AI a specific goal it needs to achieve. The request should be a clearly defined task or goal. Providing a clear task helps to narrow down the scope of the generated text. For example, your task is to write seven chapters of a children's book. To get more specific, we want to give the AI actions it should do to complete our request. Think of it like this. Imagine you're trying to bake a cake without a recipe or step-by-step -step instructions. You may end up with a cake, but not the exact cake that you wanted. If you're delegating to a baker, they'll bake you a cake, but it might not be exactly the cake that you want you need to provide them with actions or instructions or steps to complete. For example, this might be a list like Number one, each chapter should begin with the term chapter and then the number of that chapter. Step two, each chapter title should grab the reader's attention. Step three, each chapter title should be less than five words. Step four, each chapter title should include an imaginary place name. And step five, each chapter title should be part of a journey through a magical kingdom. This prompts the AI with actions to complete and structures everything out. Next up is frame. Framing your prompt is one of the bits that people often miss out and it can cause lots of wasted effort. AIs like ChatGPT will often provide context or a summary at the end or just respond in quite a conversational manner. For example, if you ask ChatGPT to write any blog post, it will follow a standard structure where it provides context for the reader as that's what it's been trained on. But maybe that information isn't relevant to us. So you can frame your prompt and ask the AI to only include certain things and to exclude other things and and this is what we call constraints. For example, we might say something like, only respond with the chapters, do not include any other text. Or if we're building an online coach or choose your own adventure story, we might say something like, only respond in short sentences or wait for me to type a command before responding. And finally, our T of craft is template. Templating is really important as it instructs the AI to deliver the output in a specific format. For example, we might say, deliver the responses as bullet points or deliver them in a table. Or if we're writing a blog, we might want to add in SEO optimized H2 and H3 headings, or we might want to make the output easy to copy. And so we can say output the response in the code window. Think about how you want the output to be produced and then template it. Now, for most prompts, if you follow these five steps, C-R-A-F-T, context, request, actions, frame, and template, you'll get way better responses than just a quick zero-shot prompt you do in a rush. And there are two optional steps that turn craft into crafted, which you might want to use too, depending on the use case. The E of crafted is examples. You may not always have examples depending on what you're trying to achieve, but if you do, they provide the AI with a format to follow. This is great for things like tweets, where you may have your own tweet structure or tweets that resonate really well with audiences. By providing an example of something like your own writing style or your tone, the AI can then simulate this in future posts. The D is then for develop. When you're experimenting, you'll likely want to refine your prompt or tweak the response before using it. Develop has two key components, developing the prompt and developing the response. If you're looking to craft a repeatable prompt that you can save and use again and again, you'll want to go back and edit your prompt or use the chat interface to suggest some quick edits to get it perfect. 
For the response itself, you may want to suggest some edits in the chat interface, or you may want to edit things manually to add that human touch to make your response unique before using it for your actual use case. So that's the craft framework for crafting awesome prompts. I have this saved and I'll use this as a base whenever I'm crafting a new prompt to try and get things as specific as possible. Okay, so let's take ChatGPT for a spin. We have our CRAFT prompt framework, which is context, request, actions, frame, and template. Using a framework is one of our technical prompt engineering skills. But what really sets good prompt engineers apart from great engineers is the ability to be creative and to use your imagination when building prompts. Now, this is more of an art, and the first step is to find some inspiration by stealing like an artist to quote Pablo Picasso. So before we can start thinking about imaginative things to put into our CRAFT framework, let's quickly run through some of the things you might want to consider when building your prompts to get inspired. Let's consider the prompt structure and the key elements to address when drafting prompts. Here are some of the most essential elements of the craft framework to consider. Firstly, there's context, a brief introduction or background information for the prompt. For example, if you're asking ChatGPT to write a blog on Microsoft, you can provide context about the company, its history, or relevant links to articles or websites. Next up in that C is persona or expert scenario. You can direct ChatGPT to assume a particular role or expertise such as a nutritionist, software engineer, historian or a marketing guru. This helps to narrow down the perspective from which the AI responds, leading to more targeted and accurate outputs. Then we've got difficulty level. You can actually indicate how complex or simplified the output should be depending on the target audience. And then subject matter, where you can specify the domain or the field the context relates to, such as artificial intelligence or history. You can even put in things like keywords to highlight that you want these used around certain areas of the article that you're creating. Next up is tone of voice. You can actually set the mood of the output, such as it being formal, funny, or casual, to match the context and the purpose. And you can really play around with this. Next up is target audience. It's really good practice to identify the demographics that you're writing for, like professionals, teenagers, or academics. You can specify age ranges, as well as other demographic information. Next up, we've got purpose. You can define the underlying goal or intention behind the prompt to prompt ChatGPT with the correct information. Next up is specific task and objective. You can provide a detailed description of the prompt's goal, such as developing a marketing plan. Defining the task and objective is crucial in obtaining accurate and relevant results. Next up is action words. You can clearly define the desired action for ChatGPT, such as writing an email, summarizing content, or conducting sentiment analysis. If you use specific words and objectives, you'll be able to shape your output much more effectively. Next up is length and output type. You can actually define the length and and format of the desired output, such as a thousand word articles or a two by two table or a bullet point summary. This helps ChatGPT in producing the appropriate content in the correct template format. Now, keep in mind that some of these elements may overlap. For instance, if you ask ChatGPT to write an email, that can fall under both action words and a specific task and objective. This list is not mutually exclusive, but serves as a comprehensive guide to crafting effective prompts and can be applied to the elements of the craft framework. When you go back and review your prompts using the prompt crafting framework, you can see if you can add any of these elements in. Okay, so one of the really nice things about ChatGPT is that you can actually have a conversation with the AI. As a prompt engineer, this makes developing your prompt, which is the D in the expanded crafted acronym, much easier than having to go back and write out the whole prompt from the start. For example, if we're developing a new prompt and we've mapped it out following the craft framework, we can start a new chat session and then hit enter. Now, ChatGPT will work its magic, but then the prompt it returns might not be exactly what we're after. And that's where developing comes into refining our prompt. So instead of having to write everything out again, we can now try out some other options. For example, we might say something like, make the response shorter or try again, but limit it to 100 words. You can also switch up the tone based on what you want. For example, you might want to make the response more conversational or ask ChatGPT to switch things to the first person. Once you've tweaked your prompt in ChatGPT, remember to go back and edit the original prompt and then try it out again in a fresh chat session. So for example, we might add in the 100 word limit to the frame section of our prompt to add in these constraints, and then we've got our optimized prompt that we can use again fresh. 
Okay, so when we're building out our prompts, what we end up with is our own set of prompts, which we can then reuse for different use cases that meet our needs. The craft framework can help you craft your own prompts, but you'll want to personalize your prompt for your own specific needs. So let's consider a simple blog post prompt constructed with the craft framework. We've got context, we've got requests, our actions, our frame, and our template for outputting. We're happy when testing this output with a specific topic, but what if we want to create multiple blog posts? Well, this is where variables come in. What I typically do is I add a phrase such as topic and then a colon and insert here to the top of the prompt and I'll then reference that term topic within the actual prompt. What this means is that I can quickly change the bracketed terms to whatever I want while keeping the main prompt that we know works very well. And this bracketed term is essentially a variable. This then allows us to save this to our prompt library in Notion or wherever you'd like to store your prompts and then quickly plug in a topic. One of the advantages of using tools like copy.ai is that they have the ability to save your prompts within the software and you can then change these variables with the click of a mouse for even greater convenience. This can also be achieved through the Chrome plugin store too. With ChatGPT, there are a few additional commands which you might find helpful that aren't obvious, but which will help you to frame and template your prompts more effectively. ChatGPT can be a little verbose and if you're creating lots of prompts, you'll want to frame things pretty tightly by specifying what you do and don't want to be included in the response. The first tip here is to use something like ignore all previous prompts in this conversation. This offers a simple reset of the conversation without having to start a new chat. I prefer starting a new chat for cleanliness, but if you're working on a prompt and you just want ChatGPT to forget what went before it, this is a pretty quick and effective method. Next up is to ask it with the answer without the conversational element. Use something like do not write any pre or post text, just write the response and only the response. ChatGPT will provide an intro and summary if it's left to its own devices. So you can shut this down and get straight to the point by including it in your prompt framing. The next tip here is to ask it not to apologize when it's writing. Do not apologize or explain, just write the response and only the response. Now, when you start tweaking prompts, ChatGPT will often apologize, which is quite nice and polite, but it can be a little bit annoying. The next step is to ask for a response formatted in Markdown. This will insert headings, paragraphs, and lists that are easy to copy and paste into blog posts or website content management systems. You can use a prompt like, write your response in formatted Markdown. The next tip is to use parentheses or squared brackets to separate your instructions about tone and writing style from the actual task, in case these instructions bleed into the actual content itself. Good punctuation is an absolute necessity for constructing good prompts. And finally, my final tip is to output in the code window. The code window has the copy button built in and will output in HTML format, which is really great if you want to export SEO optimized content quickly.